the biggest living thing you've probably never heard of. Pretty crazy that something so incomprehensibly big can sometimes go so completely unnoticed. And with other things, they can appear so enormous that we can't see anything else. But in fact, they are of little real consequence. Like that little mustard stain on your shirt. Seriously, have you ever had a conversation with someone that has a little stain on their shirt? A yellow spot that's so loud, in spite of being half the size of a dime, you can't hear what the person is saying. Or perhaps you've been the one that has the stain, and you can't understand why everyone you talk to seems so distracted. Until you go into the restroom and regain your composure and see it there, screaming at you through the reflection of the mirror, that little yellow stain. The truth is, that stain is no big deal. A little club soda and voila, it's gone. But there are some things that are really so big they take your breath away, like the view from the Empire State Building or an overlook at the Grand Canyon. Let's dig in a little deeper. What is the largest individual living thing that has ever existed on this earth? How would you answer? There are some great candidates. The elephant, that's definitely a big one. They can top out over 12,000 pounds, that's six tons, and close to 12 feet tall. At birth, the baby elephant is about three feet tall and weighs 220 pounds or more. And there are different varieties of elephant. You could have the Asian elephant, the African savanna elephant, the African forest elephants. And in the past, there were even larger relatives like the woolly mammoth and the mastodon. But nope, elephant, not the biggest. So. How about the blue whale? That thing is massive. They weigh in a bit shy of 300,000 pounds, or 150 tons, and just under 100 feet long. And what do they eat to keep up that mass? <laughs> a teeny tiny little shrimp called krill. Around 40 million of them every day. Blue whales, they are massive for sure but not the massive est. Was it one of the dinosaurs then? Surely, one of those gigantic monsters was the biggest. But no, not even the Titanosaur Patagotitan Mayorum. Don't ask me to repeat it, I don't think I could say it. If, if the truth be told, it is not as big as the blue whale. Though, this gargantuan dinosaur might outstretch the whale in length by about 20 feet, it was kind of a cheat, as this four-legged plant eater had a long, thin tail that stretched out to that 120-foot mark. But for sheer mass, their 70 tons doesn't quite tip the top of the scale compared to the whale's almost 150 tons. Hold on, some of you are saying. Plants are living organisms. How about one of those? Well, you've got a point. Tom Volk, a biology professor at the University of Wisconsin La Crosse, agrees with you. He explains that a living organism could be considered one set of genetically identical cells that are in communication with each other that have a sort of common purpose, or at least can coordinate themselves to do something. So with a definition like that, the largest living organism must be one of those giant redwoods in Sequoia National Park. And some of those are quite impressive, and really big. But there is another living organism that is even bigger, the humongous fungus. In the Mahler National Forest, in central eastern Oregon around the vicinity of Clear Creek and Meadows Creek, there lives a behemoth so big 
that it will blow your mind. It is a thing that grows one to three feet per year, and it lives for a very long time, in some cases over eight millennia or 8,000 years. There's more than one of them out there in the world. The biggest one that we know of has been named the humongous fungus. <laughs> it is an armorilla. It is an armorilla. <laughs> it is an armillaria oste fungus that envelops 2,385 acres and weighs in at a minimum of about 8,000 tons. And at a high end, it could be as high as 35,000 tons, depending on factors such as the weight of the biomass that it's consuming and the moisture levels that are present. It is a fungus, comprised mostly of a massive network of root-like tendrils or filaments that spread beneath the surface of the soil. Every once in a while, this gigantic organism will sprout up out of the ground at the base of a fir or a pine tree as honey mushrooms. These mushrooms are cream to light brown in color and reach up to four inches tall and maybe spread out about as far as five inches. But these mushrooms are not individuals. They are like the leaves of a single enormous underground tree. What does humidity like that one that covers over 2,000 acres eat? It eats a forest. It eats trees. Ground falls, mostly, but it also goes after pine and fir trees, even the big ones. In fact, if you go to Oregon's Muller National Forest to visit the humongous fungus, or one of its three or four other brothers or sisters that live in the same area, you'll want to learn to recognize which trees might be getting ready to fall as they are consumed by the Armillaria ostoyae. That's right, the humongous fungus. And four of its siblings are eating a whole forest. It seems like it's a pretty big deal and a whole lot of destruction. But not like you might think, as it happens slowly over a period of many years. And left behind is a rich soil for new trees to sprout up. Well, there are potentially several little nuggets of wisdom that might be found in this comparison of a mustard stain and the world's biggest living organism. But for now, let's focus on one. So, here's the ounce. It seems that big and small really are quantities that are defined by perspective. So, when you find yourself overwhelmed by what seems to be a really big deal, well, it's not always easy, but perhaps you can find hope, strength, peace, and even solutions by working to find a different perspective. And that's it. An ounce submitted for your consideration. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please take just a moment and give us a like or subscribe to the podcast or share it with your friends. We need all the help we can get, and we appreciate it when you help us convince the algorithms that we're worth watching. Thanks. Thanks.